Shin was an idiotic, ugly orphan who wanted to be a general, and luckily he had the chance to become cannon fodder for ruthless, bald general's dumb war tactics, so he tried his best to climb up the ranks. However, his head could easily fly off with unhinged Gigachad generals stacked against his small team. In the year 238 BCE, Ying Zheng, an angry-looking man, was crowned king before the royal Qin mausoleum in a time when there was an uprising in the nation of Qin. However, Ying Zheng quickly quelled this uprising and defeated Yu Bu Wei, who was the mastermind of a years-long power struggle. And at last, Ying Zheng finally possessed true authority over Qin. During that same year, King Kao Li, the king of Chu, passed away suddenly, and Lord Chunshin was also assassinated and the nation was in turmoil, but they apparently got their house in order quickly, with So Hua Lin becoming chancellor. This news led Chang Ping to abandon his plan of attacking Chu for the moment, since Chu now had an elevated military genius as their chancellor, and instead decided to focus on empowering their military might. Since the attack on Chu had been put on hold, the Fei Xin force which was led by Xin was dispatched to the Haiyong Hills to battle Zhao alongside Huan Yi's army. While Xin was dumbly fooling around with Chang Lei in what was meant to be a training, Liao Diao with two other soldiers discussed how they were going to attack Zhao, and at that moment, a goblin-looking toothless man called Wu He Yu came riding on an even uglier horse to deliver a message from Huan Yi, whom he called the Bossman. The message asked the Fei Xin force to go on to Kuomin and wait for the main army to arrive, and although Xin was not happy with this, he went on to Kuomin with his army, where they found a massive camp that had already been set up. While they were there, Wo Lu talked about how brutal Huan Yi was, and Liao Dao warned Xin that they needed to be careful even though they were allies with Huan Yi, after which, they all began walking through the camp where the Fei army noticed how different the Huan Yi army was from them, and when they got to Huan Yi's camp, Xin asked for Huan Yi, who appeared behind with no warning, causing him to reach for his sword instinctively. Huan Yi looked down menacingly at Xin who whimpered pathetically and told Xin he was on their side, but Xin wondered what about Huan Yi was putting him on edge. Before Huan Yi left, he revealed that he was disappointed by the pathetic way the Fei army operated, and since they were in his camp, they'd have to do things his way. He further told Xin that this would be an opportunity for him to stop being a virgin slacker and learn how the grown-ups fight. What did he say? The next morning, Huan Yi sent one of his soldiers, Nagui, to Xin, and he told Xin that they had to swap soldiers so they could fight well together, which Xin agreed to, and so Nagui joined them. Before long, Huan Yi sent the signal for them to begin their journey to Heyong, and the Fei Xin force of 8,000 quickly joined the Huan Yi army of 50,000, so the 58,000 troops in total set out to conquer Heyong and Zhao. Meanwhile in Zhao, Ji Hui, Lord of Lian Castle, teamed up with the commanding general of Zhao, Qing She, and together they mobilized their forces of 70,000 soldiers in total and set out for Heyong. When Xin and his army got to Heyong, they were surprised to see that their battleground was a dense forest, and this made Xin very uncomfortable. However, Huan Yi immediately summoned him for a strategy meeting, where they decided that conquering the five hills in the forest would help them win the battle, so Xin and his armies were to, to go into the forest as soon as possible to cover at least three hills before their enemies do. But before Xin could leave, Huan Yi warned him that there will be hell to pay if he fails. However, this did not phase Xin, so he gave Huan Yi the sting eye and declared dumbly that General Qing Shi's head was his after which he charged into the forest with his troops at a fast pace so they can reach the center hill before their enemies, and soon they passed the first hill and ran straight into an ambush. They quickly tried to retreat so they could regroup, however. Before they could move an inch, Xin was attacked by Qing Shi's lieutenant, Ma Cheng. Xin tried to block Ma Cheng's strike, but his pathetic show of power was no match for Ma Cheng, so he was struck to the ground. While Xin was still on the ground, Liao Diao saw that a lot of their soldiers were dying at the hands of Ma Cheng's army and gave the order that they should retreat, but Xin didn't think that was a good idea, so he got up and attacked Ma Cheng while declaring that his soldiers should stand their ground and fight while they wait for their other troops to come before they retreat. However, Ma Cheng mocked him for thinking they could retreat, and at that moment, Xin saw that Ma Cheng's army had taken one of the hills they managed to conquer. When he saw this, 
he attacked Ma Chung furiously and managed to inflict an injury on him, so Ma Chung swiftly turned his horse and retreated with his army, after telling Xin that they would cross swords again. Xin tried to chase him but Liao Diao reminded him that they had bigger fish to fry since their hill had been taken, so they devised a plan to take the hill back. However, when they got to the hill they found it empty, and Xin realized too late that he had been played like a dumb violin and had lost the chance to conquer the center hill. While Qi and his troops were climbing down the hill like a bunch of worthless losers, Qing Lei and the other scouts Xin sent forward discovered settlements in the forest where people were living, oblivious to the war that was about to happen in the forest. Immediately, Qing Lei noticed this. She sent one of the scouts to tell Xin about the settlement and went on to warn the people of the war that was coming. Meanwhile, different groups of Huan Yi's troops were advancing into the forest, and when Huan Yi saw that Xin had failed, he decided to go into the forest himself to direct his troops, so he went to Zainuo and ordered him and his team of half-wit degenerate savages to use their brawn to tear up the Heyong playing field. While Huan Yi was doing this, Xin and his loser soldiers furiously attacked some enemy troops in an attempt to get to the center hill but had to retreat when they saw that they were outnumbered, and the enemy troops kept advancing towards the center hill. Before long, Zhou Nu's team tore through the enemy formation with brute force and were quickly heading towards the foot of the hill to stop the enemy troops from climbing, while Lei Tu's team waited behind in two groups to hold the line on both sides of the hill. However, when Qing Shi saw this, he decided to join the fight and started cutting through Huan Yi's troops like butter, which halted their progress. When he finished cutting down all the enemy fighters he could find, Qing Shi waited for Huan Yi to confront him. Qing Shi and his elite squad moved on to the side of the central hill to attack Lei Tu's team that was waiting there, and before they knew it, Zenu and Lei Tu's unit were surrounded and stranded in enemy territory. When Lei Tu noticed this, he went to Zenu and asked him to sound the fire hair, which he did, and immediately Huan Yi's Cut army heard the sound. They started running away pathetically like scared rabbits in what seemed like a chaotic retreat. However, when Qing Shi's army tried to chase them, they discovered that they couldn't keep up because Huan Yi's troops were very skilled at running since they were former bandits. After their escape, Zenu and Lei Tu regrouped and attacked Qing Shi's squad with stealth in retaliation and set the central hill on fire so nobody could have it. Meanwhile, by nighttime, the Fei Xin forces had regrouped and set up their defenses so they could make up for their mistakes the next day, but they still hadn't heard from Chiang Lei and her scouts, which made Xin worried, but before he could think more about this, a messenger from Huan Yi's army came to deliver a message to him. The messenger called Ma Yin told Xin that Huan Yi wanted his head for the stupid mistakes he made that day, but since Xin was still needed to win the war, Huan Yi has decided to settle for an arm instead. When Xin heard this, he lashed out like a cornered dog and told Ma Yin to return to Huan Yi with a message saying that starting from day two, he planned on crushing every enemy that crossed his path and leading them to victory, but before Ma Yin left, Nagui asked him to tell Huan Yi that he will assume the debt of an arm after which he left. Not long after, their camp was attacked just as Liao Diao had predicted, but the enemy couldn't cause any damage as they were expected. However, Xin and Liao Diao were worried that Chiang Lei, who they assumed was behind enemy lines with her scouts, would do something rash. And just like they feared, Quang Lei, who was indeed behind enemy lines, dumbly decided to seek glory for herself, so she went into enemy camp to take out Liu Dong, a Zhao general all by herself. However, this did not go as planned, and she was badly injured by the general when she attacked him in his sleeping quarters, but managed to escape with the general's army on her trail. Early the next day, while Xin was still waiting for Chiang Lei to return, Mo Lun from Huan Yi's army came to share their strategy for day two of the war. He told Xin that they were going to begin their battle to capture the central hill, and Xin along with his army were to play a crucial role in ensuring their victory. Mo Lun further revealed that their opponents were mighty and warned Xin not to screw up again if he valued his pathetic life. After Mo Lun left the camp, Xin whined like a child about how Huan Yi couldn't rest without threatening him and vowed to get the job done. During that day, the Fei Xin forces experienced an unusual streak of victory as they won every fight they had with their enemies. But Liao Diao thought it was too good to be true and her fears were confirmed when they came to a dead end in front of a river separating Xin's army 
from the enemy army. They tried crossing the river, but were quickly attacked with arrows, and since they had no boats and no bridge was available, Shin felt defeated and it seemed like they would have to give up. However, Liao Diao, their tactician, came up with a crazy plan to conquer the river after putting in a lot of thought. This plan involved dividing their forces into three groups to cross the river at three different points, and the crucial part of the plan rested on the pathetic loser, Lieutenant Yuan, who didn't think he was good enough for the job. Liao Diao and Xin chose Lieutenant Yuan to carry out the most crucial part of their plan to conquer the river because of his sense of responsibility. The plan involved crossing the deepest and most dangerous part of the river, and the first soldier that tried to cross was swiftly carried away by the strong current of the river. However, the weak and pathetic Lieutenant Yuan crosses the river despite how hard it is so he can impress Xin. And when the other soldiers see this, they have no choice but to cross too because they don't want to be known as cowards. After they all crossed the river, Yuan's group helped the Xin group who were initially distracting the enemy army to cross also, and together they attacked Ma Cheng's army and were able to force them to retreat. On the other side of the forest, Huan Yi's army led by Lei Tu and Zhao's army led by Yue Ling were at a standstill with a huge expanse of land between them because they were too chicken to attack each other, so they decided to size each other up. Meanwhile, a battle for position between other units of Huan Yi's army led by Brigadier Hei Ying and the Ji Hui army led by General Hai Gang was already underway on the central hill, and it seemed like the Huan Ying army was going to win this battle. However, the tables were quickly turned when Ji Hui joined the fight at the moment when Hei Ying initiated an all-out attack. Hei Ying noticed that the presence of Ji Hui alone in the fight increased his army's morale, and they abandoned their defense formation and started an all-out attack, causing Huan Yi's army to take up a defense position. However, Ji Hui's army's attack was relentless, so they had to retreat. However, the two opponents still maintained equal footing in the war by the end of the second day. But as the day came to an end, Xin and Liao Diao wondered what was keeping Chang Lei from returning, and they concluded that they would send a search team to find her the next day. Luckily, she was alive. The next day, the Fei Xin forces pushed forward into the forest to solidify a strong position in that part of the forest, so they battled Ma Cheng's army relentlessly, and before long, Xin's army breached their central defense causing Ma Cheng to panic since he had no idea on how to stop Xin. However, Liu Dong, the Zhao general that Chiang Lei had tried to kill, joined Ma Cheng, although he was gravely injured, and told Ma Cheng that if Xin's army continued on the path they were on, they would be able to turn the tables around in their favor. But the Fei Xin's tactician, Liao Diao, had other ideas, and she decided that they were done pushing that front, so she split their forces into two and sent one part to the central hill where Ji Hui's army waited. When Ji Hui saw the Fei Xin force, he had no choice but to direct a third of his army to defend against them, causing his army's might and attention to be divided. And this left him open to attacks from the Huan Yi arm, who waited patiently for Huan Yi to give the order for them to attack, because this was their best chance to seize control of the central hill. However, Huan Yi did not give this order, instead he demanded that Wai Yi Hu be brought to him, Ji Hui, on the other hand, waited patiently for Huan Yi's army to make a move and sent a messenger to Qing Shi for reinforcement, but Qing Shi paid no mind to him as he waited in anticipation for Huan Yi to attack him so he could rip out his heart. Everybody was now focused on Huan Yi's every move, and it was obvious that the next turn of the battle was dependent on Huan Yi's next move. Before long, the sun began to set and when there was still no word from Huan Yi, all the commanders present sent a messenger each to check on Huan Yi as the army became restless. However, Huan Yi allowed the day to end without making any move and it seemed like Huan Yi was scared of his opponent's forces, but Ji Hui was convinced that Huan Yi was up to something, though he wasn't sure what. That night, Liao Diao was furious that Huan Yi had wasted the golden opportunity that she presented to him to seize control of the central hill and yelled at Mo Lun. Huan Yi's general to explain why Huan Yi wasted their chance. However, Mo Lun had nothing to say because he didn't know what Huan Yi was up to. Hei Yang on the other hand couldn't stop thinking about who Ji Hui was and why nobody in the Huan Yi's army knew of him, but she was convinced that he was a key player in the war. 
so she asked Mo Lun to warn Huan Yi about Ji Hui. While all of this was going on, Jiang Lei was recovering from her injuries with the help of an old woman, who happened to be the leader of the settlement that she warned about the war, and had plans to return to Xin the next day. While she was still with the old woman, she learned important intel on Ji Hui from her. The old woman told Chiang Lei about the tragedy of Lian, which happened 15 years ago when the Lord of Lian was Ji Chang, Ji Hui's father, and they were battling a city called An He for regional supremacy. Although the war was a fierce one, Libyan was able to stay on the winning end through the help of the young rising stars, Ji He, Liu Dong, and Ma Cheng, who were raised together by Ji Chang, and as Lian gained momentum in the war day after day, Ma Cheng and Liu Dong got injured badly while they were fighting bravely, but Ji Hui was able to slip through An He's ranks and personally slayed Lord Tang Han, the ruler of An He, securing a victory for Libyan. However, while Ji Cheng's army was off pursuing Tang Han's remaining troops, Tang Jun, Tang Han's worthless loser son, attacked the defenseless castle town of Lian like a coward in retaliation for his father's death and took Lian's women children and elderly as hostages. After which he demanded that Ji Chang and his army surrender in exchange for the hostages, which Ji Chang agreed to because he was a just ruler who loved his people. And so, Ji Chang along with his high-ranking officials were burnt alive. Ji Hui immediately took command of Lian and was able to restore Lian's might in only five years, and three years after that, An He surrendered to Lian causing a major increase in the size of their army. When Chiang Lei heard this story, she was even more motivated to go back to her allies so she could help them win the war. Meanwhile, the third night of the war wore on in eerie silence, and soon the fourth day came with promise of a fierce battle. But before the battle began, Xin and Diao went to Huan Yi's camp to demand what was going on, and they were informed that General Huan Yi would send them reinforcement, so the Fei Xin force decided to hold off the enemy fighters and gave Huan Yi till noon to send reinforcement. Before long, the battle began, and Ma Cheng's army attacked Xin's forces relentlessly, but they were able to hold their ground. However, Qing She grew impatient and angry after waiting an entire day for Huan Yi to make a move which never came, so he directed his entire squad to eliminate the Fei Xin forces, and when Lu Dong and Ma Cheng saw this, they directed their own army to join Qing She so that no member of the Fei Xin force could escape. Although Qing's action seemed like a strategic plan, Ji Hu felt something was wrong with Qing She, and he wasn't alone in this feeling because Jin Mao, a member of Qing Shi's inner circle, thought something was off too, and he saw Qing Shi's action as impatience, which he had never seen in Qing Shi before now. However, Huan Yi was satisfied with Qing Shi's action because he had deviated from his usual mode of operation which involved hunting his enemies silently, and now Huan Yi will be the one to hunt him. The Fei Xin forces tried to retreat when they saw what was happening, but they were quickly surrounded by enemy fighters and were getting attacked from all corners in what seemed like an ambush. However, this did not last for long because Zhe Nuo's gang suddenly attacked Ji Hui's army and went straight to join the battle with Qing She as their target. They fought furiously striking down any enemy fighter that stood in their way while they tried to reach their target, and just like that, Qing She suddenly became the hunted as it became clear to everyone that Huan Yi's plan all along was to draw Qing Shi out. With Zhe Nuo's gang surrounding them, it seemed like the end for Qing Shi but Ji Hui, who both Qing Shi and Huan Yi had underestimated, was able to buy some time for him when he directed his troops to join the fight, and before long, Ma Cheng and Lui Dong's armies joined the fight too, which turned the tides in their favor, and while Zhe Nuo's gang were distracted by the newest addition to the fight, Qing Shi quickly snuck out of the battle without the notice of anyone and ran for his life. Meanwhile, the Fei Xin army managed to escape from the battle when no one was watching to regroup, and as they discussed their next move, they concluded that they were going to kill Qing Shi immediately before he had the chance to rebuild his position. And although their forces were weak and depleted, they set out to deal one killing blow to Qing Shi. While the rest of the Huan Yi's army were fighting Ji Hu's troops to seize control of the Central Hill, before long, the Fei Xin forces reached Qing Shi's army and a fierce battle immediately began. The Fei Xin force fought relentlessly but they were very exhausted and didn't have as much fighters as the Qing Shi's army. Xin did his best to keep the enemy fighters at bay, but more fighters kept coming and it seemed like they were going to lose this battle. 
However, when the enemy fighters tried to eliminate Liao Diao, their tactician, she was saved at the very last second by an unexpected friend. Zhang Lei showed up at the last minute to save Liao Diao and apologized to them for her tardiness. She told Liao Diao that she and her unit will handle the ground troops so that the rest of them can go on to push through to Qing She before he could regroup. Meanwhile, in Li Mu's residence, a report about the war was brought to him, and he was told that Qing Shi's elite forces had been attacked in an enemy ambush. When Li Mu heard this, he remembered how he found and bought Qing Shi when he was little, and hoped Qing Shi wouldn't fail him now. As the battle between Fei Xin and Qing Shi forces raged on, Xin and his armies went straight for Qing She in an attempt to strike a killing blow, while Chiang Lei bought them some time. But his exhausted fighters were no match for Qing Shi's elite forces, and they were quickly knocked down. When Qing Shi saw this, he mocked Xin for thinking he could come between the battle that was meant for Huan Yi and himself when he was just a worthless, weak amateur. This enraged Xin and he furiously started cutting through Qing's elite forces in a surprising show of power, while he yelled that he wasn't just one man. He further urged his fighters to look at his back when they are having trouble and fight. And when Xin's soldiers looked at his back, they truly felt stronger and fought on bravely. But before Xin could reach Qing She, he left the battleground with some of his army, and Liao Diao realized that they were too slow, and since they didn't have enough manpower to stop Kung's escape, she thought they had lost. However, Na Gui and a group of five men suddenly came out to block Qing, Xi's escape, and were able to stall him long enough for Xin to confront Qing She, but when Xin attacked Qing, he was knocked down with one single strike from Qing She. However, Xin did not give up. He stood up again and continued fighting Qing Shi with all his might, and before long, he injured Qing while also sustaining an injury from Qing. They both fought relentlessly, but Xin had to put an end to the fight when he noticed Qing Shi's reinforcement closing in on him and his remaining fighters, so he cut Qing Shi severally before he finally dealt him a killing blow. And as Qing Shi's life flashed before his eyes, he remembered how Li Mu had saved him, and the last thing he thought about was how he wouldn't get to repay his kindness. When everyone saw that Qing Shi had been killed, they were all surprised, and the Fei Xin force rejoiced over their victory. However, their joy was cut short when they saw the enemy fighters advancing on them, and they had to retreat. Meanwhile, Kuang Lei also defeated Lui Dong on the other side of the battleground, but she was too weak to retreat on her own. However, Xin came back to save her at the last minute, like a knight in shining armor, and together with the rest of the Fei Xin force, they started running from the enemy fighters, who chased them relentlessly with vengeance. Meanwhile, Ji Hu received the news of the death of Qing She and Liu Dong, and quickly went to Jin Mao to convince him to hide the death of his master so they could continue fighting to keep He Yong. Ji Hu revealed that since Qing Shi was slain at the far side of the hill out of everyone's sight, the news of the death will take a while to reach Huan Yi's army, and after much persuasion, Jin Mao agreed to hide the death so they can continue to fight to keep He Yong out of Qin's hands. After Ji Hui and Jin Mao agreed to hide Wing Shi's death, they came up with a strategy that would help them take over the central hill before Huan Yi's army found out about Qing Shi's death, and the entire Zhao army fought the Huan Yi's army furiously. When Huan Yi saw that the Zhao army were coming down hard on his army, he summoned the Shagu gang to torture some Zhao soldiers because he was convinced that there was another major player in the Zhao army. When the Shagu gang were done torturing the soldiers, he discovered everything he needed to know about Ji Hui and ordered all his army to allow the Zhao army to seize the central hill. This caused unrest and anger amongst all the troops, but Huan Yi called all his commanders to a meeting where he assured them that the things he was doing will only lead them to victory and further revealed to them that their next move was to torment the weak. The next morning, the Zhao army woke up to see that Huan Yi's army had set the settlements in the forest on fire and took the villagers as hostages. Meanwhile, the Fei Xin forces made it back in the morning to find that the Zhao army had taken over the central hill. But before they could figure out what was happening, however, Chiang Lei saw smoke coming from the distance, so she started riding towards it, and when the others saw her, they immediately followed her. When they reached the source of the smoke, they discovered that the settlement that took Chiang Lei in when she was injured had been burnt to the ground and the people killed. This enraged Chiang Lei and Xin, and they immediately killed the Huan Yi soldiers they found there in retaliation, after which they both rode to Huan Yi in rage, while Liao Diao stayed behind to mobilize their scattered troops together in case they have to fight Huan Yi's army. When they got to Huan Yi's camp, 
Shin confronted him about what he saw in the settlement and yelled at him, but Huan Yi brushed him off and argued that it was just a little rape and murder. He further reminded Shin that he had already told him that he'd do whatever it took to win. However, Shin argued that he didn't think this was what he meant, but Huan Yi revealed that this was how they would win. This only enraged Shin more, so he went forward to attack Huan Yi, but was swiftly knocked down by Lu Tei, who called him a spineless virgin slacker idiot, and told him to take two or three of the captured girls for himself so he could feel better. When Shin heard this, he rammed his fist into Lu Tei's face without any warning, and both him and Wuyang Lei went on to start fighting everyone, though they were outnumbered. Immediately, Qian Lei saw the other commanders attacking Xin. She held her sword to Huan Yi's throat and asked them to stop. However, Lu Tei went on and held his own sword to Xin's throat and told them they had no idea of the kind of mess they just got themselves into. But this did not faze Xin, so he calmly told them that they weren't commanders or soldiers but just dumb marauders who will never be able to unite the Middle Kingdom no matter how many times they win or how powerful they become. When Huan Yi heard what Xin said, he laughed out scornfully, and when Xin asked him what was funny, he declared that Xin was a stupid delusional loser and the worst scoundrel he had ever met. He went further to mock Xin for thinking a unified Middle Kingdom would lead to an era of peace and called him an evil b who wanted more wars that would be won with genocide and pillaging in an attempt to unify the Middle Kingdom where the only nation that would rejoice in the end was Qin. Xin argued pathetically that he knew it wouldn't be easy, but Huan Yi countered that he was a dumb loser kid who knew nothing, and that he knew his type of idiots who go around preaching half-crazed justice while they lacked self-awareness. Xin tried to defend himself but Chiang Lei advised him not to waste his breath on these bunch of jokers, and reminded him that they were there to put an end to the pointless raising of villages. Huan Yi warned Wuyang Lei to never assume that any of his actions were pointless, but she insisted that they were pointless, since Xin had already slain Qing Shi the previous day. When the group heard this, they were all surprised, and the reason why the Zhao army changed their tactics the previous day suddenly became clear. Chiang Lei went on to demand that Huan Yi use this information to flip the morale levels of the enemy fighters and cease the burning of villages at once. However, Huan Yi refused and further revealed that they will keep raising villages till everyone in Haiyong was dead. Chiang Lei did not like this, so she threatened to kill him immediately, but this did not faze Huan Yi who ordered one of his cronies to kill the only other member of the Fei Xin force who had followed Xin and Chiang Lei there. Luckily this did not happen because at that moment, Wei Ping, the member of the Fei Xin force who was swapped with Na Gui, suddenly rushed in to put an end to their disagreement. Wei Ping, the ugly ignorant loser, tried to convince Xin that everything was a misunderstanding, and when Xin asked him why he thought so, he stammered his way through an explanation about how the villagers were in cahoots with the Zhao army, so it wasn't entirely like assaulting civilians, and further urged Chiang Lei to lower her sword, apologize, and get back to their unit so that everything could go back to normal. However, Xin was having none of that, so he asked Wei Ping how he knew all that, and Wei Ping answered that it was what the Huan Yi army had told him. Xin was not satisfied by his answer, so he asked him if he saw the villagers saying they were with the Zhao army, to which Wei Ping said no, and so Xin seized him in anger and yelled in his pathetic ugly his face for thinking it was okay to slaughter women and children just because they were somehow connected with the Zhao army. Wei Ping foolishly went on to tell Xin to forget about it, since they were in the middle of a war, but this only enraged Xin more, so he tightened his hold on him and yelled obscenities at Wei Ping's face which led to a Heiyong Amethyst bracelet falling from Wei Ping pocket. When Xin saw this, he was very disappointed that a member of his team would do something like that, so he suddenly became overwhelmed with emotions and cried pathetically. When Wei Ping saw this, he tried to explain but Xin didn't want to hear him, so he punched him across the face and sent him flying and crashing against the opposite wall after which Xin warned him to never come back to the Fei Xin force before walking away from him. Wei Ping begged Chiang Lei to talk to Xin on his behalf, but she also kicked him aside and told him he deserved everything that was happening to him. However, Huan Yi have had enough of the drama, so he chose that moment to tell everyone to leave and further told Xin that they were going to stop burning villages since there was nothing left to burn anyway. After they all left, Wei Ping found a cliff edge to be depressed on 
as he thought about how much of a loser he was. And when his friends offered to go to Shin and explain everything, he told them it was of no use because Shin had banished him from their squad, so he had nothing more to do but to return to his village. When his friends tried to change his mind, he broke down in tears and wept like a sissy while whining about the injustice Shin had dealt him, after which he stood up and told his friends he was quitting and going back to his village to marry his girl and tend a farm. But before he could leave, he heard some soldiers mocking Shin and the Fei Shin force, and without any hesitation, he ran down to punch one of the soldiers in the face and was knocked down in return. When he stood up, he told the group of soldiers that they were going to pay for mocking the Fei Shin force, after which he broke down in tears as he came to a realization of what the Fei Shin force was really about. When the soldiers were done listening to Wei Ping's pathetic sob story, one of them thought it would be fun to rearrange his facial features, so he started pummeling his face while his dumb friends stood aside and watched the soldier in horror. However, Nagui came to Wei Ping's rescue and killed the soldier for mocking their squad before carrying Wei Ping back to the Fei Xin camp. Back in the camp, Wei Ping regained consciousness and was surprised to find Xin by his side. When Xin noticed he was awake, he told Wei Ping his sob story and explained why he couldn't be a general like Huan Yi that rapes and murders innocent people, after which he apologized to Wei Ping who assured him that there was nothing to be sorry about while crying like a loser, so they reconciled with the whole squad eavesdropping on their conversation from outside the tent. The next day, Huan Yi sent messengers to Xin to inform him of his role in the battle to come. These messengers also revealed that Huan Yi had declared that the war would be over that day. But before the showdown, Huan Yi sent Ji Hui a gift of a giant sculpture made from the corpses of the Haiyong residents, along with a letter that ended with Huan Yi promising to do the same to the people of Lian. And immediately Ji Hui received this message, a messenger told him Huan Yi was on the move and his troops were heading to Lian. After Ji Hui got this message, he panicked and told Ji Mao that they needed to abandon the hill and go to Lian, but Jin Mao tried to assure him that the message Huan Yi sent was just a trap to lure him out. But Ma Cheng argued that if they don't chase Huan Yi down, he will retaliate by turning Lian into a sea of blood, and it will be worse than what he did to the residents of Heyong. Ji Mao pleaded with Ji Hui to give them at least two days to finish fortifying the hill, but Ji Hui told him Lian wouldn't survive against Huan Yi even for one day. After much argument, Jin Mao told Ji Hui that the decision was his to make since Ji Hui was the acting army's general. However, he went on to tell Ji Hui that the Wing Shi army came to Heyong to defend Zhao, so if they lose Heyong, the Qin army will likely invade the surrounding region with Heyong as their base. And when this invasion begins, they won't be able to guess how much Zhao blood will be spilled and how many lives will be lost. He further reminded Ji Hui that the battle for Heyong was meant to stop all that, which was why they've all been fighting, bleeding and dying all in the name of that moral cause. So if he leaves to save his single castle, all their efforts will be in vain, and he warns Ji Hui to choose carefully. At this point Ji Hui was at a crossroads, and he thought about the children of Lian that his father had entrusted in his care, and decided to abandon the Qing Shi army, so he could protect his city. Immediately Ji Hui's army left the hill, the Qin army attacked the Zhao army that was already prepared for an all-out resistance. However, Qing Shi's army alone was no match for the fury of the Huang Yi army, and before long, the battle for the Heyong Hills ended in total victory for the Qin army. Meanwhile, once Huang Yi was sure that Ji Hui and his army had followed him, he drew them just far enough away before scattering his troops in all directions, and by then, Huang Yi's army had already captured the central hill, so he calmly made his way up to the peak as his troops rejoiced. The night of their victory, Liao Diao filled the rest of the Fei Xin squad in on how Huan Yi was able to win against the Zhao army, and they discovered that Huan Yi was a cold-hearted, merciless, invincible genius who is driven by a deep core of rage. The next morning, Liao Diao complained about the tasks that were assigned to their unit when Mo Lun and Lu Tei came to deliver the message, but Xin accepted despite Liao Diao's complaint, and when he asked about the whereabouts of Huan Yi, Lu Tei told him that Huan Yi will never pay any mind to a lowly worthless servant boy like him, so he shouldn't get a big head. When Lu Tei finished speaking, they left and Xin went on to find a rock to be sat on, where he vowed to become a great general so he could surpass Huan Yi. 
After Nagi returned to Lute, he went before Huan Yi and his group of commanders to tell them that he wanted to join the Fei Xin force because Lute, his commander, was risless and the food in their camp tasted like shit. And although Lu Te was not in support of this, Nagi and a bunch of other Huan Yi soldiers left the Huan camp to join the Fei Xin force. Back in Xianyang, where the echoes of the Heyong victory had not faded, the King of Win received a message of national importance from Kai Zhe. And a few days after Kai Zhe's urgent message, a procession of unknown nationality arrived in Xianyang under heavy security from which the King of Qi and Zhao's Chancellor, Li Mu, walked out to the shock and concern of everyone present. However, when Kai Zi, a goblin-looking small old man, was asked why he brought the two men without any prior consultation, he apologized and explained that following procedures would have made things more complicated. He further revealed that the King of Qi must pass through Zhao to visit Xianyang, so he agreed for Li Mu to accompany the king for an audience with the Quin King as payment for the Qi King's passage through Zhao. After Kai Zi said this, he persuaded the King of Qin to speak with the King of Qi, and although the purpose of the king's visit was unclear, the king of Qin went on to speak with him. Before their discussion began, the king of Qi introduced himself as Wang Jian, while the king of Qin introduced himself as Ying Zheng, after which they began talking. Ying Zheng began by appreciating Qi's withdrawal from the coalition army, which helped Qin to win the wall. But Wang Jian told him he wasn't particularly trying to help Qin at that time, so he asked Ying Zheng why he was trying to conquer the other six nation, and Ying Zheng explained to him that he wanted to unify the Middle Land and create a peaceful world where laws will rule over the people, and so there will be equality among the people, no matter what. After Ying Zheng answered Wang Jian's question, Ying Zheng asked Wang Jian why he came all the way to Qin, and he told him that he came to form an alliance between Qin and Qi because he believed in the world Ying Zheng was trying to create. Ying Zheng was very pleased with this, so he thanked Kai Zhe for arranging the meeting and also thanked Wang Jian for believing in him. Kai Zhe also thanked Ying Zheng for inspiring him with his vision of a new world, and as they discussed more, they came to the conclusion that Li Mu was Ying Zheng's biggest threat, so Ying Zheng left Wang Jian and Kai Zhe to grant Li Mu audience, and shortly after, Kai Zhe breathed his last.